Before we dive into this video, I want to remind you that we're giving away a Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED Edition. We're also giving away a collector's edition of the game and a pin from PAX East. Enter to head on to the link in the pin comment or the description. Oh, beyond all of this, we also have a special 100,000 subscriber t-shirt that we commissioned an artist to create. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be available only this week and next week. Same with our Tears of the Kingdom t-shirts and stuff as well. Link down in the description to purchase any of that. All right, guys, let's get into this video, and we're talking about part three of the Ask the Developer for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the interview that Nintendo did with IG Aonuma and more. AG Aonuma, I know, guys, I'm really bad at pronouncing the names, so I'm apologizing ahead of time that I'm going to butcher all of these names during the interview. All right, so a world connected always to the sky. I now understand the challenges and circumstances behind The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom's development. You said that the setting is the same as that of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. However, now that you can explore the skies above Hyrule, does this mean that the world has expanded considerably? And let's make this a little bigger for you guys, shall we? Shall we, right? You guys want this to be a smidge bigger than what it is? Let's even go one more. There we go. All right. Um, Fubiyashi. Fuji. Bayashi, I don't know. Guys, I'm sorry. Yes, there are skies and caves to explore now. There are also areas we weren't able to create in the previous title for multiple reasons. Dota responds, actually, the previous title, Breath of the Wild, was originally developed for Wii U. So there were restrictions in development. There were a lot of ideas we wanted to implement during its development, but we made clear decisions on what we wouldn't do in that game. For example, we decided it wouldn't involve flying. Then Aonuma-san kept saying, if flying is out of the question, I want to dig underground. And we'd respond, oh no, please don't make us develop that too. Laughs. Aonuma, it was just my natural response when playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Like, man, I want to dig a hole right there. Everyone laughs. Dota, for Tears of the Kingdom, we began by compiling and implementing ideas we couldn't in the previous title. We wouldn't have been able to do so that we had to make a completely new world. So developing in the same setting as the previous game was significant in this sense as well. Takizawa says the entrances to cliffside caves might be a good example. Dota, in the previous title, cliffs could only be climbed up and the cliff sides were bare. Takizawa responds, I think that players who find a cliffside cave in this game might start wondering, is there one in the cliffs over there too? When a place, or even one that's already familiar, is augmented with something of worth, you begin to see the world in a different light. Even as the game's developers, we started seeing the landscape in a different way while working on the game. I believe the way players explore Hyrule will change too. Next question. I see. It's a Legend of Zelda characteristic for one to hint to lead to another, causing a chain reaction for players to view different places in new ways. How about the skies then? Fujibayashi says... Although the walls in the last game gave height, I thought the gameplay was largely two-dimensional. This time, we added verticality. In other words, gameplay that utilizes height. We developed a three-dimensional world under the premise that you'd be able to travel from the surface to the skies seamlessly. Link also has a new action called Dive and a new outfit for the skies. Thinking about how to get to the floating islands seems fun. Fujibayashi responds, The actions you take to get there and the exploration of the Sky Islands themselves are both a lot of fun. The new actions in Sky Area were such novelties to us that we added one Sky Island after another to test out the different gameplay elements. Then one day, the designers scolded us. They said we made the skies messy by adding too many islands. Takizawa responds, It was pretty cluttered. They all laugh. Aonuma, when we placed the islands to scale in the skies, I was surprised to see just how small they were when looking up at them from the ground. Dota responds, As with the previous title, we ensured that everything connected seamlessly. Things like houses were built to scale, and even if you enter a house, there's no map transition. From the windows, you can see the outside exactly the way you did before entering the house. Everything looks just as it should, but when we created the skies to scale on a seamless map and added features like floating stepping stones, they appeared too small from the ground and only looked like loose specks of trash. Laughs. In the end, the designers did a great job of adjusting their appearance. Wakai. Connecting the ground and the sky seamlessly also presented difficulties from a sound perspective. Dota. Yes, the sound staff often pressed the programmers to clarify where the dividing line between the surface and the sky was. 
what Kai responds. Sound transitions are done seamlessly as well, but the background music in particular needed to change according to the situation. Because of this, we need to place a transition trigger to indicate where the music should switch. Dota responds, I never need to consider where the sky begins before, so I had to think about it. Laughs. Everyone laughs. What Kai responds, also, it was difficult to find a fitting sound for the sky. Takizawa responds, I guess it's because the sky is a scene we've only ever witnessed from inside an airplane, right? Wakai, exactly. I knew what flying in the sky sounded like, but the request was for the island in the sky. Laughs. Aonuma, after all, no one had ever been to an island in the sky. So we've only discussed the skies, but the title has its dungeons too, right? Yes, baby. Confirmation of dungeons? Fujibayashi, yes. We haven't talked about the dungeons yet. They've changed from the previous game. For example, there is a dungeon that connects directly from Hyrule's surface. If you dive from the sky straight into the dungeon, you'll trigger an event. We think this will be a new experience that wasn't possible in the previous game. We've made dungeons unique to their respective environments, so we think you'll be able to enjoy the wide variety of regional characteristics. Takizawa says, making a wide variety was pretty challenging. The four divine beasts were dungeons in the last game, and they shared similar designs. This time, the dungeons are huge, and each carry their own regional look and feel, just like traditional Zelda games. We think they will provide a satisfying challenge for players, and there's certainly a challenge to develop. They laugh, and then they let us know that part four and part five of this interview drop tomorrow. But guys, did you see that? Look... I know if you're someone who's paid attention to leaks, you might have already known this, but if you haven't, this is Nintendo's first official confirmation of dungeons existing in the game. There being regional dungeons and really cool aspect. They tease one of the dungeons where if you dive in it from the sky, in particular, right here, you'll trigger an event. I don't know what the event is, but it's only if you die into it straight from the sky. So Gosh knows, any dungeon I find, I might try to dive into it straight from the sky to figure out what the hell this event is. I am so happy that dungeons are back. Obviously, they reference the dungeons in Breath of the Wild, but that these ones are more like traditional Zelda dungeons. This is the news we all wanted. Why we're only getting it now so close to release instead of a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I don't know. But thank you for this interview and confirming something without really doing a lot of spoilers. I mean, look, dungeons are back. They're regional, they're themed, of course, and yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm, yes. Now I know, I'll, some of you guys are going to be like, I already knew this, man. I've been watching all the leaks. Hey, guys, we don't talk about the leaks, so for us that have not been paying attention, that are only using official Nintendo information, this is brand new stuff, so I'm so excited about this. This is amazing. You guys are awesome. You know what? Thank you so much, Nintendo, for this. We got parts four and five, which are probably the final parts of the interview, as tomorrow is the last day before launch. You guys are awesome, and we'll catch you in the next video.